empty vessels. They just pour things into you. But instead, when you present new knowledge, it's always in context. The context means it's what you already know. Right? So this is the first feature. Whatever activity you do, the assumption is that they already know something and use that to build on. Second is high student engagement. High student engagement means they're always doing something. Doing something doesn't mean that they have to move physically. They could be doing something, sitting down, working out a problem in the mind, but they are doing it. Compared to a lecture. A lecture, you listen, right? Read data. Right? So that's why you see the definition of a lecture is the transfer of information from the lecturer's notes to the student's notes. Okay? Sorry, from the lecturer's mind. No, from the lecturer's notes to the student's notes without going through either of the minds. <laughs> okay. But here, they must be engaged in doing something physically or The third one is high student interaction. They have to communicate and therefore the activities must have a purpose. So for example, when you ask them to play a simulation, what is the purpose? When you ask them to play a game, for example, uh, monopoly. What is the purpose? Is to get as much as possible. And then, if you ask them to interact, for example, in a role play, right? You always have a purpose. So, let's say you ask them to play a, a role as a tourist guide. Then you guide this tourist through the zoo, let's say, uh, or safari. Then the purpose is very clearly to make sure that the tourist knows what, what is available in the safari. So, the fourth one is that active student learning means active thinking process and the students actually seek to understand. They, they actually seek to understand, not you give. They try to avoid. All right? And then, very important is the students will construct meaning from experiences. Isn't it true that when we learn, we are constructing meaning to whatever we come across? That is the constructivist view. Okay? Uh, have you come across any Any uh, theories on constructivist theory? Not yet? Con how we learn? We learn by building blocks. We learn from what we know to something we don't know. Okay? Then, how we learn is also from constructing meaning, is like creating a frame from whatever we get. I'll give you an example. I've got twin boys. When they were three plus, I taught them car on the road. Car. Mm, they like car. 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 Everything car. Lorry is so car. Bus is so car. Because they construct their own meaning by saying anything moving on the road is car. And then, next stage, after some time, I told them, Bus. No, car. Car, bus. Then they have to unlearn and relearn. They have to deconstruct their understanding of car and reconstruct. Then they say, big is bus, small carrying people, car. Then after some time, worry. Oh. Then, oh, okay, the small one is car, the 
The big one, getting people first, getting things going. They have to break it down and deliver. That's how we learn. So that's why we say learning is an active process. <coughs> it's not just put in, put in, put in, put in. They have to re sort it out. That is the whole point. So now whatever we do, we are looking at all these four. So let's look at inquiry learning method. Like we said when we talked about the way we prepare materials, we are trying to prepare materials to provide opportunities to them. We don't provide them with the content. We provide opportunities to them. So how we see it is we are playing a turnaround game. We are turning it around. Instead of giving you the contents, we just give you the platform to do your own inquiry and learn. So provides this approach provides the learner with uh, provides opportunities for learners to actively develop skills that enable them to locate, gather, analyze, dig, and assign information. So they are looking at opportunities where there is actively and do all this with the information and then it's always in context right so this is what inquiry learning methods are so what would be an example you don't look at your notes <laughs> You also like playing your students, right? With the notes before. <laughs> so, what examples that you can think of that that have those features that we talked about? Case studies, yes. Case studies, they will actively solve the problem. Okay. What else? Group discussion. Yes, meaning you present them with questions to solve. Yes, okay. And then? Scenarios. Yes, scenarios or settings, right? Situations, what else? Problem based. Right? Problem based learning. Problem based learning, yes. Problem based learning. And I give you other examples that are related. For example, these are grouped up. You have experiments <coughs> or lab work. You have practical, sometimes field work or research or education visits. They are all opportunities to learn, to inquire. Then you have project work, for example. Project work can be creative projects or exploratory projects. There are various types of projects. Then you have problem-based learning, the one that you mentioned, case-based situational learning. These are quite the same with different variations. Okay? Now, the process is very clear. First, you have the inquisition. Then you have the acquisition. After that, you have the supposition, implementation, summation, exhibition. Six steps. Any type will have the six, but they are not always complete. Sometimes you don't need one step. Sometimes you have bigger on this step. You have smaller on the other steps. So it depends on the nature of your activity. So most of them will fall into the six steps. Let's look at the six steps. Inquisition is the beginning. You always start with the question. What if? I wonder. Question to be investigated. That's why you want them to think, right? So you always give them 
something to think about. So, what examples? A. I was supposed to have this uh, separated. This part, all this. I don't know why it came out also. Cannot ask you to think. Uh, <laughs> supposed to be your, your part to think. The one to go. Okay. Now, easy is when you use your own questions. What do you? Ask them to be curious. Okay? That one is easy. But you can also use other ways, like you said, video. I think uh, Renza said. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Various types of brainstorming and, and, and idea giving them. Forums. Yes. Ah, here you can use with Facebook. Yes. <laughs> as long as they turn out ideas, they just, you know, brainstorm and get everything out. Just, you know, uh, try out, explore ideas. And then, Supposition, which is identifying an ID statement to test. In other words, hypothesis 
formulation. You have to make them formulate. That's why the younger students, the teacher will generate hypothesis. Or else they might generate all sorts of things. So you generate for them can do. Sometimes you can get the students to create hypothesis. Usually the older groups will do that. Okay? So after brainstorming, they come up on the hypothesis. What is it that they want to test? What is most likely to be the answer, but you need to test. So that is the, the third stage. Then the fourth point, implementation, which is where you design and carry out the plan. This one you can use many, many techniques. As long as you, you get them to collect data, Internet surfing, library research, small group discussion, interviews, what else? They can do questionnaire. Why, why are those methods of acquisition to serve internet scientists or patients? Okay, because the beginning, before the actual finding the they brainstorm first, they just turn out from what they know. Remember, we want to use what they know. So they bring out what they know first, before they test it. So we want to build from what they know. We have to bring it out. And then we test. This is where you test. You find the information through the net, through discussion, library research. What else? Do you all those two days are for like investigation or like implementation? Well, yes. Okay. The word they use in implement is to implement the data, the inquiry. Data. So the, the stages will be implement stages. Uh, so you were saying it's supposed to be? Investigation. Yeah, the actual inquiry is the whole thing. So the stage is the implementation stage to get the form. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
But here it's all put together. La. You collect and you create the stuff before you sum up. Uh, yeah, yeah, so in other words, you actually collect the stuff and you uh, analyze until you are satisfied, then you sum it up or you make conclusion. Then when you make conclusion, the 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 conclusion can be in report writing, preparing presentation proof, and so on, in order to exhibit. The exhibition will be summit report, presentation, oral review, group reporting, exhibition, launch. Have you ever used this for your assessment? You yeah. have. Presentation, yes. And then reporting. Uh, sorry, uh, group reporting is yeah. presentation. Uh, exhibition. Exhibition? Not yet. But uh, I, I know that nursing uses a lot of exhibition. Some of them are not, not. Some subjects they use exhibition. And then blocks, have you tried that? You tried that. Some language teachers use that. They, they encourage the students to write in the blog. The whole point is to exhibit the knowledge. 